Hello viewers, today in this session we will discuss the indifference curves analysis, the meaning of indifference curves analysis, the assumptions of indifference curves analysis and the characteristics of indifference curves analysis. The question is what are these indifference curves and why did it all begin? Actually the utility theory as propounded by Marshall has been used for a very long period of time. But there were certain problems attached to the utility theory of Marshall. And what are those problems? If I put them to you one by one, the first and the most important problem is that utility is a subjective phenomena and utility cannot be measured in terms of money. Utility is what? Utility is the want satisfying power contained in a commodity or in a service. So this is the want satisfying power and the satisfaction cannot be measured in terms of money. There is no, in fact, there is no standard yardstick with the help of which the satisfaction can be measured. And if at all money is being used as a yardstick, please do remember that money is not a standard yardstick because the value of money keeps changing. It is different for different customers. It is different for the same person at different periods of time. It is subject to fluctuation and moreover it is very absurd to measure a phenomena like utility. Therefore, the economists continue to, to think about the other ways how can this consumer preference be studied. And that is how they thought of an alternative model and this is indifference curves analysis. In this approach, there is no need to value the level of satisfaction of a consumer. Rather, whatever are the choices of a consumer, the orders are assigned to those choices. Like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, now these orders are assigned. Because these orders are assigned, therefore this is known as the ordinal principle of studying the utility. The utility analysis can be studied with the help of this ordinal principle and this is what has been the basis of the indifference curves analysis. In 1881, Edgeworth began the study of indifference curves. He came out for the first time with indifference curves, a sort of indifference curves, not the entirely developed form of it. Later, Perito followed him, Italian economist Perito, and then even later, Allen and Hicks, they developed this analysis properly. This is the history of indifference curves analysis. But let me tell you what, what is so indifferent about it. Why the name indifference curves analysis? Uh, see with the help of this diagram. This is one commodity, commodity X, depicted along the X axis. This is another commodity Y, depicted along the Y axis. You may call this apples and this as oranges. And supposing this is the indifference curve. On this indifference curve there may be many, many combinations. This is one, this is two, this is three. Now, if a consumer likes oranges more, then he will go in for the third combination. If a consumer likes both equally, then 
he or she will go in for combination number two. And if a consumer likes apples more, he or she will go in for combination number one. Because in one, the quantity of apples is more and the quantity of oranges is less. But slowly we notice that the quantity of oranges is being increased. Now this one, two, three, these are the three combination points. In one combination you have some of apple, more of apple and a little of oranges. In second combination you have both equally in a, in a good quantity. Then in the third combination you have more of oranges and less of apple. So it is a matter of choice. It is not a matter of bargain. It is not because of bargain that one is moving from 1 to 3 or from 3 to 1. The movement is purely because of choice. And because the movement is purely because of choice, the consumer is not attached to any of the combinations for gain. Rather, consumer is indifferent towards all these combinations. Consumer is indifferent or neutral. Consumer is just not concerned about anything else. Consumer is concerned about choice. If I like more of oranges, I'll select option number three. If I like more of apples, I'll select option number one. Nothing more, nothing less. So when I select one, say supposing I selected combination number three, now I'm indifferent towards two and one. I have nothing to do with two and one. Similarly, if I select combination number one, then I am neutral towards combination number two and three. And this also has to be noted that in the indifference curve analysis, there may be n number of combinations on a curve, which is for the sake of convenience is named as IC. IC stands for indifference curve. But the value is the same. The budget value is the same. One indifference curve shows the same level of satisfaction from top to bottom. There is no change in satisfaction. It's only a matter of choice, nothing beyond that. So this is the indifference curves analysis. And why indifference? I explained to you. Now, what is an indifference curve? An indifference curve is the locus of various combinations, a large number of combinations which can be created on one indifference curve. So that indifference curve shows a large number of combinations which are there on a curve and this curve has got a definite shape. But how does it emerge? It emerges from indifference schedule indifference schedule and this indifference schedule is the quantity of x and y the two commodities say combinations units of x units of x units of y supposing there are three combinations three one two and three and these combinations are 2 plus 6, then 3 and 4, then 4 and 3. So, over here we see that these are the three combinations. In the first combination, you have 6 units of y and 2 units of x. 
in the second combination you have four units of y and three units of x and in the third combination you have three units of y and four units of x if we plot the same in a diagram then what happens on this curve we have shown the uh, y item y 1 2 3 4 5 6 and on this curve x we have shown item x 1 2 3 4 5 6 the first combination is 6 is to 2 6 of y so 6 of y and 2 of x and second combination is 4 of y and 3 of x 4 units of y and 3 units of x and in the third combination what do you find is 3 units of y and 4 units of x if we join these three points that is say we call this a we call this b and we call this c now join all these points and draw a curve then an indifference curve is created so what is an indifference curve indifference curve is the locus of many points we have shown three only over here there may be many points on this curve all those points are indifference uh, create an indifference curve and one indifference curve denotes one level of satisfaction so this is what is what is an indifference curve so we know the indifference schedule this is a schedule this is a curve indifference curve is derived with the help of indifference schedule and as i said in the beginning a b and c all these three combinations carry the same weightage movement from a to c or from c to a is only a matter of individual choice matter of choice of a person now assumptions of indifference curves this is the next aspect of indifference curves analysis as we have been discussing continuously the first assumption is that all the combinations on one indifference curve are equal this is the first uh, assumption and therefore it is rather natural that any curve to the right will denote a higher level of satisfaction say for this way this is ic1 this is ic2 this is ic3 now a b c all these three points are equal but a1 b1 c1 these points are on a higher indifference curve and therefore these points denote a higher level of satisfaction this is even higher a b c these are the three points so every indifference curve to the right denotes a higher level of satisfaction and every indifference curve to the left denotes a lower level of satisfaction so the first thing is that all the points on one indifference curve are equal but on a higher indifference curve every point, um, point denotes a higher level of satisfaction this is the first thing second the movement is only a matter of choice this is not a matter of gain and that is how indifference is ensured otherwise indifference will not exist if i gain more by moving from a to b then why would i not move but over here you see this is not the gain see supposing this is a this is b this is c if you go from a to c then what happens you will have to leave this much and you will get this much you will gain this much additional and you will lose this much which is more ab is more than bc you leave ab then only you get bc so this is indifference this indifference is there because of this reason only because you lose more and you gain less still you make a movement why do you make a movement because it's a matter of your choice 
then one more important thing uh, assumption about this is that commodities are perfectly divisible if the commodities are not perfectly divisible then many combinations cannot be made on one indifference curve therefore the commodities have to be perfectly divisible and similarly one more important thing is consumers behave in a rational manner this is again a very important assumption of indifference curves analysis so what are the assumptions all the combinations on one curve denote equal level of satisfaction every curve to the right denotes a higher level of satisfaction the movement is a matter of choice and not a matter of any gain or anything else then consumers behave rationally and the commodities are perfectly divisible now the next portion in this only is the in characteristics of indifference curves have a negative slope this is the first characteristic of indifference curves if it is an indifference curve then it has to have the negative slope see this is the negative slope of the curve and this is the positive slope this is the negative and this is the positive what is the difference between negative and positive see if a consumer is at point a but because of choice consumer makes a movement at point c this is the movement now what happens consumer sacrifices delta ab and gains delta bc and we know that delta ab is greater than delta bc this is a bigger portion this is a smaller portion what you leave sacrifice is more what you get is less and see the positive slope in the positive if you move from one point to another supposing you take a movement from this is a and this is b you make a movement from a to b then you get this much more of x and this much more of y you get more and more of y and more and more of x and it goes on you take it further there again you will notice that you get more of x and more of y so this will not remain an indifference curve this is an indifference curve because here the movement is not to get more rather the movement is because of choice it is a matter of my choice therefore i am behaving in this manner this is what it is second first is negative slope second one these curves are convex to the origin indifference curves are convex to the origin convex to the origin see there are two types of lenses one is a convex lens it is of this shape and one is a concave lens which is of this shape this is concave and this is convex so the shape of indifference curves is convex as i told a little earlier while explaining 
द फर्स्ट पॉइंट दैट वेन यू मेक ए मूवमेंट फ्रॉम ए टू सी इट इज नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ एनी मोर ऑफ गेन इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ च्वाइस बिकॉज यू लूज मोर एंड स्टिल यू टेक ए मूवमेंट ऑन द अदर हैंड इफ द कर्व इज कॉन्वेक्स कॉन्केव then this thing will not happen see and even further whatever you lose is less whatever you gain is more so in a concave curve the gain is more and therefore there is a uh, there is a chance that anybody would like to make a movement from a to c because one gains more but here the indifference of a consumer is established because the curve is convex to the origin so in difference curves are always convex to the origin if there are concave curves then in concave curves what will happen is that the amount you lose is less and the amount you get is more so indifference is not established so indifference curves are not concave indifference curves are convex in case there is a concave shape then that will be an exceptional situation and only for a shorter period of time but overall in the longer period of time the indifference curves have got this kind of a shape only <clears throat> third two indifference curves do not intersect each other two ics that means in difference curves do not intersect each other now supposing this is a diagram here we have this indifference curve and another indifference curve this is ic1 this is ic2 now what do you find that these two are intersecting each other ic1 and ic2 at point e so are these in difference curves and the answer is no these have are negative these have got these are convex to the origin negative slope convex to origin both the conditions are satisfied but because they intersect each other they cannot be the indifference curves how see let us take a, a point this is q this is r and this is another point now we have many points on these curves this is one f this is g and this is h what you notice over here as i said in the beginning itself that every point on one indifference curve shows equal level of satisfaction that means i see one on this curve you have e and g and h three points e g and h 
these are the points on ic1 they are equal similarly you have e and f two points on ic2 e and f are on ic2 since these are equal e is common in both we delete e now what do we have g and h these are equal to what g and h these are equal to each other or f g rather let us say f only one has a value q r other one has a value o q so o q value is less o r value is more and as a result we get to know that these points are not the same point e point g point h are equal point f point e are equal but f and g are not equal f and g are not equal why f and g are not equal because one denotes more the other one denotes less s denotes oq and f denotes or whereas these are on the same indifference curve so the two indifference curve never inter intersect each other so we were continuing with the characteristics of indifference curves and i told you that the indifference curves have certain characteristics and these characteristics tell us that indifference curves are negatively sloped they are convex to the origin but the third important characteristic is that the two indifference curves if they are the indifference curves they will never intersect each other now i'll show it to you here with the help of this diagram which is there on this board it will tell us that the two curves if they in intersect each other will never be the indifference curves now over here if you notice that the two indifference curves ic1 and ic2 they have got the same shape they are number 1 negatively sloped number 2 they are convex to the origin both the properties are being fulfilled but there is one additional situation which shows to us that these two curves intersect at point e and as a result these are not the indifference curves why because we know that under the assumptions of indifference curves we have learned that on one indifference curve every point every combination tells us that this combination gives the equal satisfaction which simply means that there are two points on ic1 one is e other one is f say this is f f so e should be equal to f this is the fundamental characteristic of indifference curves e and f both these points are on the same indifference curve and therefore these two points should be equal and supposing this is g the third point now what do we get that on another indifference curve ic2 we have got the two points one is e and other one is g so on one hand e is equal to f and on the other hand e is equal to g therefore if we remove e then we get f should be equal to g see this is f and this is g and these two are not equal what do these two points denote it has been shown with the help of uh, an algebraic equation wherein point e what does it tell us point e tell us that there is op quantity of y and oq quantity of x so op y plus oq x this is one situation on ic 
What is the second situation at point F? O L Y plus O M X. O L Y plus O M X. So at point E, what is the value of point E? Point E tells us that we have got O P quantity of Y and O Q quantity of X, and this is equal to O L quantity of Y and O M quantity of X. Now. At IC two, at IC two, we have got two points. One is E, other one is G. Now notice that at G, O L quantity O L of Y and O N of X. This quantity is there. So in the second equation, what is the situation? O P Y plus O N. Uh, O O P Y plus O Q X. This is the first and last is G O L Y plus O N X. This is the situation. Now O P Y O Q X is common in both the equations. Let us remove these. That means if this is equal to this, this is equal to this. Those this should be equal to this. So O L Y plus O M X should be equal to O L Y plus O N X. Again O L is common. We removed it. Now what do we get? O M X is equal to O N X. Just see, O M X is equal to O N X, which is not so. Very simple. This O M quant O M quantity of X and O N quantity of X are not equal because O N is more as compared to O M. that means it is not so so these are not the indifference curves these curves are simply not the indifference curves so in order to be the indifference curves the curves should be convex to the origin they should be negatively sloped but these two curves should never intersect each other